Hello, part 27 of this tutorial is not a continuation of previous work but a beginning of something. There are those of us who have jumped into BVA D3 without Banano experience. We try and explain this here by creating a Vutify wireframe. First let's look at the BVA D3 library. The two important methods to start your application are initialize and serve. Every Banano application or website comes with a body element. When we initialize we get this body element and add our elements to it. Each of these elements has a unique ID. We have the app, placeholder, append holder, and app template. The app template element is the main element that is used by the library to generate the user interface. We use the placeholder and append holder for temporal designs. As these elements exist after you initialize, to access them with Banano, you use getElement, passing it the ID of the element. This is like getElement by ID in JavaScript. After you get the element, you can set attributes to it, add classes and then add styles. To explain this, we will use a blank template. Let's rename and open the project in the IDE. We have given it an app name and also a title. The title will appear on the browser page tab. The server IP is important also. We are running our app in the local host on port 8080. This is for development. You can update the port if it's not 80. If your app will use inline PHP, in release mode, you need to use the actual server address. As we are in debug mode, this will not be used. However, we are not using PHP for this, we will then comment it out. The PHP file will be based on our app name variable. Note that as soon as we change to release mode, that part of the code was activated. Our app entry point is banana ready, this calls pg index init. Whatever we build for the app, it will happen in that code module in the init subroutine. In this module, we have defined a variable that gives us access to our library. In the init method, we initialize the library and then call serve. We will build our user interface between the Vutify initialize call and the Vutify serve calls. If we run the application now, there will be nothing shown. Let's inspect the page. We can see the body, 
the app div we added and the other divs we added on the library initialization. To build our user interface, we will use Banano Elements. For example, we already have a div with an id of app. To access it, we can use the Banano get element call. Banano get element returns a Banano element. This is just an object. When we get the app div, we will be able to set its attributes, add classes etc. Whilst you can use banano get element to access an HTML element, you can also dimension a variable and then initialize it. Both of these execute a query selector call, using what you have defined to access in brackets. Like I said, the placeholder, append holder elements are used for temporal builds, the element that we will use is the one named app template. Whilst we have give it a v template tag name, internally our library will make it a template tag. Let's log the elements on the console log, so that we can see what is returned. We hold shift Control i this accesses the developer console. On the console, we see our HTML element objects. There is nothing on the interface as we have not created anything. We will run our app in debug mode, this will help with live code swapping. We will also split out screen to see the changes in real time. Let's create a template, we will use this later on. This we can use to create v-containers. It will expect an ID of the element. It is important that each element we create has a unique name. When we create our app, we need to add content inside a main container, that container should have a vmain tag. For the placeholder and append holder, we can add content to them, that we can reuse. It's for temporal elements. Let's add a node to access the app template HTML element in our page.
we execute the query selector call on it. This element will be what our Vudify app template is based on. Even if we add text to it, nothing will be shown because an element called vmain is expected. Nothing has been added by our append method. Let's add some proper code here to make this work. The first expected element by Vudify is a vApp element, we add this to our template. We open up a Vudify base wireframe, this will help us recreate what is there using Banano elements. We have a vApp tag named Inspire, let's create this on our side. Inside the vApp, we have a navigation drawer also. We will use banano append methods to achieve this. This drawer has a state bound attribute called vModel. The vModel variable name is drawer and this is assigned a null value. From what we have added to the app template, we can see on the inspector that a new element was created, let's continue. We will comment the placeholder code as we don't need it as yet. We need to access the inspire named element and then add child elements to it. We get the app template, append the vApp to it. We are rewriting the code just above in another format. We need to add a drawer to inspire. Let's access the inspire element to add the drawer to it. We use banano get element in this case. We append the drawer to the inspire v app. We also need to give it a name so that we can access it later. We have defined our inspire variable as a banano element also. The drawer has some attributes to it, we need to set these two. One of these attributes, the vModel, is bound to a state variable. We need to define that also on our side. Let's initialize this state as per Vudify code. To do that we use the set data call. Setting state like this can also be done after the serve call. Let's set the drawer vModel property or attribute. We call the setIter method to do so, 
passing it the property name and value. The other property is a boolean property as it does not have a value defined for it. To code such a property, we need to bind it, using a colon, on the property name. The default value for such loose properties is true, we however need to indicate this in our code. One thing for sure, we cannot be setting these attributes to the inspire element, we need to set them to the drawer. We will fix this soon. Inside inspire, is also the vapp bar, let's add this. We give it an identifier. Let's fix the drawer code above. As you can see, we are not optimizing our code here, we could have just defined a variable for the drawer to get the element. The app bar also has an attribute called app that we need to set, let's do that. Our app bar is now displayed. As you can see, here we are using Banano elements to create elements and set attributes. We do this via code. Even with an element that has been designed with the abstract designer, we can get it and then set its attributes. Let's add the hamburger, the toolbar title and see it that the drawer also works. We add main first. We access main and then set text to it. We can see that this gets drawn in our page. Let's change this to initialize instead. We add the hamburger. Let's make the navbar a variable first, we will use append method to it and add the hamburger and toolbar title.
the parent element is the app bar called abnav. We use chaining to append content to abnav and then get the hamburger with the get call. A shortcut for banano get element. Ensure that the ID is specified so that the get call is able to get the element. The hamburger has a click method. This method toggles the state variable named drawer between true and false. To add this event, we will use the VON directive, which has been shortcut with at. So anytime you see the at sign in Boojs code, the actual name that Banano recognizes is Vion with a colon. These types of events have no event binding, they just change states. So we will not write a callback function for them. When the button is clicked, the state will be read and the inverse of it applied and then saved back to the state variable. If we make this true, clicking the button will make it false and vice versa. Let's explore our user interface. We set the state to true, the drawer V model is bound to that state, so the drawer will be opened. We toggle the drawer by clicking the hamburger, which fires our Vion click event toggling the state. Let's add the toolbar title inside the navbar. Commenting code is rather useful, let's do it. So in summary, we have an app template. We add a child element called vapp to it. We name that inspire. We get this newly created inspire element and add a navigation drawer to it. We set the attributes of the navigation drawer. We then add an app bar to inspire, this is followed by a hamburger inside the app bar. We set a click event for the hamburger so that it toggles the drawer. We also add a toolbar title to the app bar giving it a caption of application.
To access an existing element on the page we can use banano get element, or initialize or even get calls. The ID of each element should be unique and an element should have an ID for us to be able to access it. To bind attributes, we prefix the property name with a colon. Bound elements can use a state variable, that state variable can be initialized with the set data call. In this example code, we have used banano elements to create the user interface. We are not using custom views or any special methods but just pure banano. The way that bootify elements are defined is via properties, we see how to set boolean properties with bindings and also other properties. We have used the append method to add child elements to parent elements. Let's add a container inside our vmain so that we can add our text to it. Let's set the text of the container. This is our finished wireframe. Only using banano element classes. Remember to subscribe to my channel to get updates and awesome code. Thank you.